A key tenant of being a Bitcoiner is trying to live by the ethos, don't trust, verify. We can do this in many different ways by holding our own keys or running a node. Now, one of the other ways you can do this is by verifying the software that you run. Today, we're going to investigate how to do exactly that using GPG, as well as some of the other tools you can utilize with this software. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. Quick shout out to sponsors of the show, CoinKite.com. These guys, they just have the best Bitcoin hardware out there. I love using my cold card Mark IV to secure my Bitcoin. It works beautifully in a multi-sig, uh, NFC now enabled, uh, virtual disk mode, all kinds of great stuff. This thing is just so versatile and it can be used very simply or if you want to jump into the weeds, there's a ton of advanced features. They've also got things like the open dime, the block clock, the sats card, cold power, uh, dice for entropy, tons of great things, the tap signer, all this stuff you can check out on coinkite.com. Uh, you can use their store and use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything there. Links are down below. Now, if you're in Canada, ShigPay is a super easy way to be stacking sats. You can buy Bitcoin, you can e-transfer in and out with no deposit or withdrawal fees. Uh, they have a thin spread. And if you use the link down below, if you sign up and purchase your first $100 worth of Bitcoin, they will give you 30, yes, $30 for free after that point. You can also then share your, uh, your link and anybody that signs up with that link and does the same, you also get 30 bucks and so do they. After that, you can shake your phone every single day for free sats. You can use things like their sats back visa card. There's their shake paid program. There's all kinds of awesome things happening at shake pay. Be sure to check them out. Links are down below if you want to get that 30 bucks. Now, Ledin.io, you can use these guys for a variety of different services with your Bitcoin. They're super useful for me whenever I'm in a cash flow crunch and I need some dollars, but I don't want to necessarily sell Bitcoin to get them. Well, I can deposit here. I can get a loan of dollars to my bank account. And when I pay back those dollars, I get back the same amount of Bitcoin. I also enjoy their savings accounts for Bitcoin and USDC. They have quarterly audits with a third party and you can cryptograph verify that your holdings are part of the audit so that you don't get messed around Celsius style. They've got their B2X offering. There's got Bitcoin backed mortgages across Canada and soon in some US states. You can check them out at start.ledin.io slash BTC sessions. If you sign up and you fund your account, you get 10 bucks for free. Bit refill helps a ton when I'm living on Bitcoin and maybe if you just want to execute some high time preference purchases, you can purchase any gift card your little heart desires here with Bitcoin. You can pay on chain and via the Lightning Network. You earn sats back as you shop. You earn additional sats back with the referral program. You can do things also like top up your phone. You can get lightning inbound lightning channels. And if you're in the US, you can actually pay your bills here so you can begin to live on a Bitcoin standard. So check them out. Don't miss them. Bitrefill.com. Link is down below. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, be sure to get it in solid steel. Why? Well, pieces of paper don't quite cut it. You don't want to have to be worrying about fire damage or water damage or just discarding a piece of paper sitting around the office when it's a big hunk of steel, that's a lot harder to do. And so this gives me my peace of mind when I'm backing up important wallets. So check them out, uh, privacypros.io slash BTC sessions. You can grab a bill bottle there. They've also got tons of other stuff like Faraday bags and other great things. So check them out. And with that, let's dive into the show. So let's clarify what I mean by verifying software releases with GPG. What is all of that stuff? So GPG stands for GNU Privacy Guard. It's a piece of software, it's free, it's open source, anybody can use it. Um, and it is actually an open source version of something called PGP, put together by Symantec. PGP stands for Pretty Good Privacy. And all of this software allows you to sign and encrypt 
messages or files and allows other people to be able to decrypt files or check if you have signed that particular message or file. So what this allows you as a user to do is say you were downloading wallet software and you want to check that that software actually came from the original developer and the website hasn't been hacked and uploaded with fake versions of the software, which could be running malicious code that will try to steal your Bitcoin. Well, you can check the software and check the signature on it to make sure it's coming from the right people and it has not been tampered with. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, in terms of prerequisites, I am going to be working today from a Mac. However, I will also show you the tool that you can download for Windows computers, though the flow will be a little bit different. Um, I encourage you to still watch this as some of the lessons learned will likely apply to Windows as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a Windows computer, nor do I plan on getting one anytime soon. Uh, I will be covering how to do this on Linux as I do have a secondary computer. That will be a bit down the line, but for today, I'm gonna to be working from a Mac. I'm gonna show you what you need to get. So let's take a look at what you're gonna need. So if you're on a Mac, you can just head to gpgtools.org and you're gonna download GPG Suite and install it. Very simple, you download it, you double click the package, it'll install onto your computer. Now, if you're on Windows, you're gonna to wanna to check out gnupg.org slash download. And there are a couple options for Windows. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see OS, Windows, and this is a full featured Windows version of GNUPG. You can download that and that will give you a lot of the same functionality that I'm exploring here, uh, but I won't specifically be looking at that one today. We're also going to be uh, installing something called Homebrew and doing a couple other things. And then we'll be uh, testing out some of the software on uh, Spectre Wallet and on Sparrow Wallet just to see how it works. Uh, so nonetheless, we're going to assume that we're going to jump forward to you having downloaded and installed GPG Suite. And, uh, and then we're going to attack getting Homebrew. So I've got on my desktop here, GPG Keychain. It is a program that I can run natively on my Mac. Now I do already have some keys here. Yours will be blank, there'll be nothing there. You'll just kind of see the new import, export, and all of these functions up here. We will get into using this momentarily. However, there's something else I wanna do as well. And this is the part where I don't want you to run away. It's not gonna be difficult. We're gonna go through this slowly together, but we're gonna open up the terminal. So if you're unsure where to find that, uh, you can just search terminal and you'll be able to open it here on your desktop. I've added mine to my dock because I've been using it more, but you'll be able to click on this and open it up. I've got two windows going here, so I'll drag it over. So we've got a terminal window and this is where you can type in commands. All right, we're gonna be using some commands just to install something uh, called Homebrew. So this is a website called brew.sh. And very simply here, right on the main page, there's a string of code and the ability to copy it. There's a little clipboard button here. You're just gonna tap on that and copy it. Then you're gonna jump over to your terminal window and you're literally just gonna paste it right in. I know it looks confusing. You don't really need to understand what's going on here. We're just really, we're in, um, importing uh, a package onto your Mac. We're installing some software. So you're gonna paste that and you're gonna hit the enter key. And it's gonna say, hey, we need sudo access, which is super user do. It basically means we need the password to your computer so that we're allowed to install this. So you're gonna type that in. Oh, there we go. Okay, and so it says, hey, this script is gonna install the following things, return or enter to continue or any other key to abort. So I'm gonna hit enter. All right, downloading and installing. It'll go through a few things here. All right, that's it. That is done. We're all set there. Now there's one other thing 
that I'd like you to install. And I just found in my experience dealing with uh, some of the verification stuff, there's, there's one other thing you need to run here. And so uh, I'll link this down below, um, but it's uh, core utilities is what it's called. Anyways, uh, this link is in the show notes down below. You're literally just gonna go to the link. You're gonna hit the copy button here, jump back to your terminal, paste that in, enter. All right, perfect. And it was already installed, obviously, but I just wanted to show running the command. Normally it'll go through uh, something and, and it'll install it and give you a slightly different message here. Nonetheless, we are all set. Okay, that is it. That's all we need the terminal right now. If you wanna clear out the terminal, we'll be taking a look at it again. You can literally type clear and hit enter. Your screen is all cleared out. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now we've got everything installed that we need. We've got our terminal open. We've got our GBG keychain all set. Up next, we are going to download and verify some software. Now, a little prereq put into the middle here is I just want to explain what a hash is here because we're going to be referring to hashes. All right. So uh, this is probably one of the easier to understand uh, versions of this that I've seen online. So I'm going to use this one. It says on Investopedia here, a hash is a mathematical function that converts an input of arbitrary length. So it could be digits or a file or something that was typed out of arbitrary length into an encrypted output of a fixed length. So it will create a set of digits that are of a specific length, 256 perhaps. Um, so it will basically take anything that you have, a file, um, you typing the word hello, whatever it is, it'll put it through a mathematical function and it will pump out a set of digits that is a fixed length, no matter what you put in. It could be the entire encyclopedia or it could be a single letter, doesn't matter. It will put out something of a fixed length. And then it says, thus, regardless of the original amount of data or file size involved, its unique hash will always be the same size. Moreover, hashes cannot be used to reverse engineer the input from the hashed output since hash functions are one way. So what this means is if I type in, hello, my name is Ben, and I put it through a hash function and it spits out all of these digits, nobody can take those digits and reverse engineer and find out what I wrote without knowing the, the key that generated it, all right? So you can't just take the final product and go back in time and figure out what the person typed to get that or what the file was to get that output. You have to have the formula of w exactly what happened in between. Um, the input basically is like taking something and putting it in a meat grinder. You can put the ground beef, uh, you can't put the ground beef and turn it back into a steak effectively. Uh, still, if you use such a function on the same data, its hash will be identical so you can validate that the data is the same. So basically with the end product, you can't work backwards, but if you know the original and you say, hey, let me test this, Th this, hello, my name is Ben, I'm gonna put it through this function. Oh, I get the same output, I get the same final digits, so I can verify that very, very easily, okay? So that's effectively what we're gonna, what we're gonna be doing to verify the signatures on this uh, software that we're going to be downloading. We're going to be checking to make sure that the correct people signed these software releases. So we're going to jump here to Spectre Desktop. This is uh, a desktop tool that allows you to uh, manage Bitcoin wallets, uh, and link up to your Bitcoin core node and, and use software and hardware wallets all in one easy interface. Nonetheless, regardless of what it does, we're gonna actually be downloading the software and verifying the signature on it. So here you can, uh, this is the download page, so specter.solutions slash downloads. Uh, 
and there's one for Mac right here. Now, if I just click this, it's just gonna download the single file. However, underneath, we see the option for verify signature. And most good software releases that are open source and are allowing you to do this will show you exactly what to do in this process. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna hit verify signature. Now, this is a little scary, but don't worry, we're gonna walk through it. Okay, so it says, step one, you're gonna download Spectre for Mac OS. And they conveniently have the same link here, so we're just gonna click that. And that downloads the file to my downloads folder. Perfect, that's all set. Next, we're gonna download the hash file, SHA sums. And what a hash file is, is they've effectively taken this original file, Spectre, and they've hashed it to create this smaller file, okay? So we're going to download that, okay? So that's a hash right there. And then finally, the signature file for this hash. And what the signature file, which I'm gonna download right now, is basically it's the developer signing this little file, which is irrefutably a product of the actual software. The reason you don't sign the actual software is because it would be a very large file to then download again, and it just makes it a lot easier and simplistic and, and a bit more lean rather than having to effectively download the software twice, okay? So you got the software, you created a hash of the software, making sure that, uh, that these are if irrefutably linked and easy to verify, and then the developer signed the hash file, okay? Basically, through proxy, signing the software, saying, I made this, I released it, okay? So, we now have all of those files. Let's move on to step number two. It says, download and import the PGP public key of Spectre Signer here. Now, on a Mac, I found this is a little bit different than um, then uh, just clicking. You're not gonna just simply download it. Uh, you're actually going to, rather than clicking, you're going to right click or two fingers if you're on a trackpad and you're gonna hit save link as. And we're gonna save this to the downloads folder and we'll just leave it as look up. We'll hit save. You may get this lookup, can't be downloaded securely. We're just gonna hit keep, all right? And that downloads a text file. Okay, so we've got that text file. It even shows us a fingerprint for the key, all right? We'll refer back to that later. Now, uh, there's 2B and 2C. These are for old releases. We don't need these steps unless you're running a very old release of Spectre. Step two here is all we really need um, because we're getting the current version. Move on to number three. Open the terminal app and we have that open here, all right? And step four, we're gonna paste in the following lines. And it says, no, the first two commands are needed only if this is your first time doing this process. Now, it may not even be fully necessary because uh, the, the um, first, or rather the second step may not be fully necessary given that we've already downloaded GPG keychain, but we're gonna do all the steps anyways, just so that we're, we're thorough, okay? So we're gonna copy all of this. Make sure you don't get the number one in there, but you're gonna copy that string. You're gonna go to the terminal, you're gonna paste it in and hit enter. All right, there we go. Uh, now, it may give you this, actually. The Ruby Homebrew installer is now disabled and has been rewritten in Bash. Uh, please migrate to the following command. If you get this, by the way, good to take a look at what it actually says here. Uh, run this instead. So you're going to copy this. It says, hey, it's been migrated, so you just need a different link. Paste it in. Uh, so note to anybody from Spectre watching this, uh, you got to change that line of code. There we go. Okay, so now it's saying, hey, we need your password for your computer. There we go. It says this script will install the following things, return or enter to continue or any other key to abort. I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so it's downloading and installing. It'll take a moment. And there we go. So everything is all set, all installed. Okay, up next, step two. 
brew install GNUPG. So this is actually uh, the same set of software that we're using with uh, uh, the GPG keychain, um, but we're gonna install it here uh, anyways, just, just to make sure we're all good. So we're gonna paste that in, hit enter, and then say it says, of course, hey, it's already installed and up to date. We're all good. Okay. Next, we're going to type CD downloads. CD just means change directory. And that's just going to take us from where we are to the folder that we need to be. By the way, I'm going to type clear here and get rid of all the mess on our screen. We don't need it anymore. Clear. All gone. Okay. So. A little side note, just so you kind of get what's going on right now. This string right here basically lets us know where we are on our computer right now. Um, and we can check what's in the folder we're in by uh, typing ls, which lists all of the folders um, that are where we currently are. So it says, hey, there's our applications, documents, movies, public, all of these different things are folders that we have access to right now. Um, but we want to go to downloads, okay? So again, I'm just going to clear this so I don't confuse you too much. But we're, uh, that was a little extra thing that you didn't necessarily need to know. All you need to know is step number three is you're typing CD downloads. And you're going to paste that in. Now we're in our downloads folder. We can see it because it's part of the string of where we are. Okay, CD downloads. Now step four, I, I want to clarify something here. Step four, it says GPG import. And then this would be a file here, pgbkeys.asc. Um, now, when we download it, this is basically, you're trying to import the, the public key of the person who supposedly signed the software. Now we did that, and let's uh, just open up my downloads folder on my Mac. Now, now we did download that, but that's not the name of the file, it's lookup.txt. So we have a couple options here of how we could do this. So we can import it, but we would need to type in lookup.txt instead of .asc. However, there's another way we can do this. We can do it very easily and conveniently via GPG keychain. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit import. We're going to go to our downloads folder and this is the key that we downloaded. Okay. This is the PGP key that we need. So we're going to open that up. Import successful. The following key was successfully imported. Spectre signer. No reply at spectre.solutions. And then it gives a little string here. Uh, now when we look here, spectre signer, and then it says fingerprint 785A2269. There's a, a long string of digits here. And if we recall, if we go back, it said, hey, the fingerprint for this key is Seven eight five a two two six nine. Seven eight five a two two six. It looks like the same fingerprint. So we now have the key imported to uh, GPG keychain, and at this point, we can now and go and verify the signature on the files that we downloaded. Now, just a side note: you can actually also check which keys you have in the command line. And I'm just gonna show you quickly how to do that. You can type GPG, two dashes, list, another dash, keys. Hit enter. It's gonna give you a bunch of different keys. So we can see the most recent one here, Spectre Signer, and there's that uh, fingerprint, 785A2269. It's right there. It also lists the other keys that I have available that was already in my uh, GPG uh, keychain. All right, so that's how you find your keys in the terminal. Again, I'll type clear here to get rid of the mess. Now, I also wanna show you how to import this key using the command line, the exact same thing we just did. And I told you it was a little bit weird because it's a different file name that we downloaded. But um, in step four, it says to do GPG import and then this file name. But again, that's not the name of the actual file. The name that of the file we downloaded was lookup.txt. So you just need to know the name of the file. So let's really quick, I'm gonna go to Spectre Signer. I'm gonna right click on it. I'm just gonna delete that key off so we don't have it anymore. 
We do have the file, but it's not in uh, GPG right now. So here's my terminal window. I'm going to type, as in step number four, the first part, gpg dash dash import, but the name of our file is lookup.txt. Lookup.txt. So I'm going to type that in and hit enter. Okay. So this now has the key, uh, it says total number processed in, in imported one. Okay, so we've now imported that key. And if I click back to GBG keychain, we can see it's back. And if I type in GPG dash dash list, oops, keys, it's back in here too. All right, so two different ways to import it. Obviously, this is the easier one, just hitting import and clicking on the file. Nonetheless, we have what we need. We can now verify software. Now, once again, there's going to be two ways to verify this. And the first thing we're doing is we're verifying the signature. So we're going to verify that the signature is actually signed by uh, the developers by this Spectre signer um, key. All right. So first, we're actually just going to open the file and see what happens. And then again, this is in my downloads folder, he, not there, here. So here's the signed file. It finishes with .asc. So we're just going to double click it, see what happens. It says uh, GPG services would like to access your files and downloads folder. That's OK. We're going to hit OK. Now it says untrusted signature. Now untrusted just means that, hey, you know, it's it was signed by this person, but there's you, you don't really know who created this signature. Basically, signatures build up trust over time. OK, so you can mark a, a, a signature or a key as trusted. Um, and the way that you would do that is over time. OK, well, there haven't been problems with the releases. They're continuously signed by the same key. Probably good. But it does say, hey, it was signed by this individual, Spectre Signer, with this fingerprint, which is the same one as above. Okay. Um, now, if we want, I can actually change. Uh, I can go to details by right clicking. And then I can change the trust here. I can just give it ultimate trust. All right. So now, if I double click that file again, Trusted signature, okay? And it says the signing key was Spectre Signer and, uh, and we're all set. Okay, perfect. So we know that the signature is from Spectre, but there's still something we don't know yet. And that is, sure, they signed a file, this Shawsome file, but we got to make sure that that file is actually the hash of the software, right? Remember I told you there's software that they turn into a hash, which is a smaller file, and then they sign the smaller file. So here's the software. We took that software, they hashed it into this file, and then the developer at Spectre signed this file here. So we know that the signature belongs to this file. What we need to verify now is that this file is actually the hash of Spectre Desktop software, this particular software that we've just downloaded. So how do we do that? So we're going to verify the SHA-256, the hash of the Spectre software, and that it's indeed in the signed hashes file. Okay, so we're basically going to copy and paste. Copy this. And we're going to jump over to our terminal window. Let's clear this out again so it's not so messy. We're just going to paste it in. Now, uh, we're in our downloads folder. The only, um, the only prerequisite here is that those files are all still in the same place, right? That Spectre is in the same folder as this hash, all right? Because it's going to be looking for the correct correlation here. So we'll just paste in 
that string it says Shaw Shaw sum, um, and it says that it's looking to see if it's the hash of this specter file that we downloaded. We'll hit enter. All right. It says okay. It says that you're looking for this message here on the website. Um, make sure that the output shows okay next to the file name like this, Spectre Desktop version, the version that we have, okay. Spectre Desktop version 1.13.0, okay. So we know now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Spectre, this file, this software was hashed into this file and then this file was signed by the developers at Spectre Desktop that own this particular set of keys. So we have now successfully verified everything with that software. You can now go ahead, double click Spectre and install it and not be worried that it has uh, been man in the middle attacked in its malicious software. We're gonna do this again for another set of software now. And just another quick little tip when it comes to uh, command line, you can change the directory back to home by just typing CD and then the little tilde and it goes back to your home. All right, you can hit clear. We're back to the way we started. Alternatively, you could just shut down the terminal and open it up again. All right, so let's get to work on the next set of software. So this is Sparrow Desktop, another great piece of infrastructure for managing your uh, Bitcoin wallets, your hardware, and linking to your node, all kinds of great stuff in this thing. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm gonna be downloading um, this file for my Mac. Uh, this is the type of Mac that I have, so I'm gonna download this uh, software here. So that is now downloaded. By the way, this is sparrowwallet.com slash download. And then down below, it has a description of how to verify the release. So first thing I need to do is I need to import the key of Craig Raw, the lead developer of this project. And so I'm simply going to copy and paste this text into my terminal. All right, number processed and imported is one. Now, if I click back to the keychain tool, I can see Craig Raw has been added. Now, this uh, signature was created and has been used on software releases since October 3rd of 2019, so it's been around for quite some time. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit details, and I'm gonna mark this one as, as trusted. Okay, so I'll leave that. All right, so we've now imported his signature. Uh, what do we need to do next? Okay, so we're gonna change the directory, directory to downloads. And we'll copy, by the way, each one of these lines is a new uh, command to type in. You know, uh, paste them all at the same time. Okay, so paste that in. We're now in our downloads folder. Now we're gonna require a couple other things here. Down at the bottom, we have a two files, manifest and manifest signature. So manifest is, uh, again, effectively linked to the file here that we downloaded, and manifest signature is the s the signing of the manifest uh, file. So same kind of deal with Spectre Desktop, where they hash the software and then they sign the hashed software. So we're going to download this one, and we're going to download this one, the bottom two. Okay. So we've got a couple files in there. We've got the hash and we've got the signature. So at this point, we'll go back to the, uh, down, down below. Um, so we were here, we're in our downloads folder. We can now type in GPG, verify, and the file name. So we'll copy that, paste it in. And it says, good signature from Craig Raw. This is the same thing that we would see here in GPG Keychain. Now, how might you do that given the type of file that we downloaded? Same thing, we're gonna open up our finder. We'll go to downloads. And again, there's this ASC file. I can just double click it. Hey, signed by Craig Raw. Everything looks good there, perfect, okay. 
So we've verified the signature in two different ways. You just need to do one of them, either a command line or clicking on the file. Okay, so uh, you should see the following verification. It just kind of shows you, again, good signature from Craig Raw. That's what we're looking for. Now, you may get a message. Um, this is not a trusted signature. We changed that when we gave it the ultimate trust in, in the settings there, but you may see that. Um, now, this is gonna be different depending on what type of computer you're using. We're on a Mac, so I'm gonna be using this top one here. However, if you're on Linux or Windows, it'll look a little bit different, just so you know. But we're going to make sure that the hashed file is actually Sparrow, is actually uh, a hash of the Sparrow software. So I just copied that first command. I'm gonna open up my terminal. Again, I'll clear it out for you guys. I'm just gonna paste that in and hit enter. There we go, software name and okay. So we are all set here we now know, just to reiterate, we now know that this software was hashed to create this file, this manifest file, and then this manifest file was signed by the key that is known to be owned by Craig Raw. Okay, so we have now verified everything. At that point, we could feel comfortable to double click Sparrow and install it, and we know that it has been created and signed off on by Craig Raw himself. So let's learn how to create our own key pair that will allow us to sign or encrypt um, messages and or files. So within uh, GPG Keychain here, uh, you're gonna hit the new or the plus button and you're going to create a new key pair here and you're going to name it. So this one, um, I'm just gonna call sessions test okay and you can attach any email you like you can just put it in here it doesn't even have to be a real email actually um, but you can add an email and then upload and so that people can verify it's you later but for now I'm just gonna leave this here and I'll just call it sessions at test.ca okay then you're going to add a password do something like that. Now it'll let you know the strength of the password. I chose a relatively simple one for this, um, but uh, if, if this is going to be a very important key pair where you're going to be signing or encrypting very important um, information, then you might want something stronger that fills up that, uh, that strength bar. There are some advanced options um, that I'm not necessarily going to add right now, um, but you can add comments, you can change the key type. I'm just gonna leave it as default. Um, this is the type of encryption or the length of the encryption string that it puts out. And you can have an expiry, which can be edited later if you see fit. Either way, I'm not gonna touch any of that right now. I'm just gonna hit create key. And it says password is too simple. Again, I told you there's a warning there. Now you can enter a new password or you can just continue using this simple one. For now, I'm gonna use the simple one. And then it says, please enter the passphrase to protect your new key. And again, okay, and I'm gonna hit okay. So it says your new key is being created. Okay, now created successfully. And then it says to make it easier for your friends and colleagues to find your public key and start communicating with you securely, encrypt messages for you and verify the authenticity of your messages, it is recommended to upload your public key to the key servers. Key servers are public, so the name and email you use in your key will be publicly visible. Keys cannot be deleted from the key servers. They can be revoked, but not removed. If you rather prefer not to use key servers, please consider attaching your public key to your signed and encrypted emails. Uh, do you want to upload? For this one, I'm going to say no, but if you're going to be doing something in a public fashion, you want people to be able to publicly identify your signature and verify that something's for you, you would hit upload public key. I'm going to say no, uh, but just a note, I have done that for uh, this BTC Sessions one, okay? Nonetheless, we have a sessions test here. Now you'll notice the ones in 
bold here are ones where I hold a private key, meaning I can sign things uh, with these keys. The ones that are not in bold are keys where I have the public key. So I have the ability to verify that somebody signed something, but I can't sign as them. So I can't sign something with Craig Ross uh, <laughs> keys. I can just verify whether or not he signed something. Okay. Um, so we now have this key here and now we can start to see what we can do with it. Now, once you have a public and private or public and secret key, you can also export uh, your keys as you see fit. So instances of exporting your keys would be, hey, maybe you want somebody uh, to know your public key so that they can encrypt messages and send them to you so that only you can open them. Or maybe you want to export your key so that you can actually use it and be able to sign things on a different computer. So both instances are available here. So I selected sessions test. And if I right click on it, I can hit export. All right, this set, uh, this is going to save a file and I can save it to, I'll save it to the, uh, to the desktop here. And then it says, I have the option to include the secret key in the exported file. So if I don't want to include the secret key, then that would be, again, for somebody to be able to send me encrypted messages that I can then decrypt and read. Uh, but if it's for myself and I want to be able to sign, again, I would check this box. So I'm going to save it both ways and we'll see how that acts. Okay. So first I'll save one without the secret key. So we'll save that. Okay. Keys are exported. I'll pull them over onto this desktop. So that's the public. All right. That anybody could have. And all the worst they could do is send me an encrypted message. All right. Then I can hit export and I can say include secret keys and we'll save that one. Okay, and then it needs my passphrase there. Okay, and that was exported as well. And this one says secret, all right? So you don't wanna go sending your secret key um, to anybody you want to keep that for yourself so that you can, you and you alone can sign and decrypt things meant for you. All right. Nonetheless, here are those two things. So now I can go ahead and I can delete this key out of here. And uh, yes, I want to delete my secret key. Delete secret keys, delete both keys. So you can delete the secret or the public or both. Okay. So I'm going to hit delete keys. All right. So that is now gone. All right. So let's imagine we're now on a new computer and maybe I'm somebody who just wants to send a message to that particular person that only they can read. Well, then I would use the public and I can e either just drop it in here or I can double click it. All right. For me, for this one, I'll just drop it in. Okay. Import successful. This is a public key. So I can now see sessions test.ca, but I can't sign anything with this. I can't encrypt anything with this. What I can do is I can send a message to this secret or to this person and only that person will be able to decrypt it. But let's take a look at if I, uh, if I were to import the other one. Okay. And this one I'll double click instead. Okay. It's asking for password for that one. I'll hit okay. And there we go. So that imported successfully, not just the public key, but the private key. So that means now I have the credentials to both sign and encrypt and decrypt messages meant for sessions at test.ca or meant for this specific um, this specific key of which we see the fingerprint here. And if you look back at uh, before, it'll be the same fingerprint. So this is how you would utilize the export function. Again, public is for anybody so that they can send you messages or files for you to decrypt. Secret is for yourself if you're migrating to another machine and you need access to those keys. So let's take a look at signing and verifying something. So you can sign a plain text message 
or you can sign a file if you see fit. All right, so I pulled up uh, text edit right now. Again, you can just uh, find that by, by just searching here again, text edit, and you can just use that to, to open up whatever you see fit. Okay, um, so I just have a, a basic text edit window up here and I'm gonna type something and I'm gonna say, hey, this was written by sessions test. Okay, so there's a, a message and I want people to be able to easily verify that the person who holds the keys to sessions at test.ca or sessions test with this fingerprint actually wrote this. How do I do that? I select, I right click and then down in services, once you've installed uh, the GPT keychain, you have all these options. And so we're going to hit sign selection. Then you're gonna choose the key you wanna sign it with. So sessions test, we'll choose. And we'll hit choose. And that outputs this. So it has the message, and then it has this string of digits. And anybody that has my public key can verify if I indeed wrote this. So let's, let's check. We highlight everything, right click, services and keep in mind i do have the private key but anybody that just simply had the public key would be able to do this and we're going to verify signature of the selection we've got to select all of it okay we hit there sessions test all right so this signature and again it says untrusted but it says Hey, this signature with this fingerprint, which we can see 6EBCEA12, 6EBCEA12, they're the same, all right? Uh, the, it, it was signed by that individual who owns that key. Now, again, the signature is valid, but untrusted. We just hadn't marked it trusted yet, okay? But we already saw how to do that if we see fit. Okay, perfect. Now, we can also, let me delete this. Um, hey, this was written by Sessions Test. I can save this as a file. Okay, so file, and we'll just save it to the desktop. All right, sign me. All right, so we'll save that. I'll drag it over so we can see it. So there's that file. All right. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can go to services after right clicking and I can sign the file. Choose my key, sessions test, choose. Okay, signing finished, signed, sign me. All right, and what this does is it creates a new file and it's a signature it says that I have signed this file. Now, how do I actually check that? Normally this might be in my downloads folder, but we're actually going to either double click on this file. So if I double click, hey, look, signing key, sessions test. Again, we haven't marked this. Maybe I'll just uh, mark it as a trusted signature anyways, but uh, so details. Trusted, okay, we'll do that one more time. Same thing, if I sign it, look, signing key, sessions test, it's now trusted because I changed that. And the file that is signed is signme.rtf, this one over here. So we can see that whoever owns that key has signed and verified that file. Okay, now what if the file itself had changed? would that signature still be true? Let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna change it. Hey, this was written by Sessions instead of Sessions Test. I'm gonna save it again. Exact same, so I, I saved the update to this file. Let's see what happens if we check the signature this time. 
Warning, invalid signature. Signing key, sessions test, signed file. So it says this signature does not match this message. You should not trust this message because it was manipulated. Messages can be unintentionally altered after they were signed. Exchange servers of mailing lists are known to have rendered valid signatures invalid in the past, so on and so forth. Basically, it's saying, do not trust this message. It's been changed since the signature happened. Okay, the same would be true if I go over here and I first services will sign the selection and we'll choose sessions test. Okay, so we have this output message which I could put anywhere and anybody could verify. Um, but if I change it, the message here, if I go to select everything, and I go to services and I say verify signature. Invalid signature. Signature does not match this message. You should not trust this message because it was manipulated. So we get the warning that this is not valid. All right. You can also do this via the command line. So right now we are on it. Uh, I'll change to desktop. So we're on our desktop instead of downloads. All right, and I can go GPG, verify, sign me RTF. By the way, if you start typing the name of a file and then you hit tab, it'll fill it in as to what it thinks it is. I can hit enter. All right, signature cannot be verified, please remember. And so remember I had edited the file and so it can verify or not verify. And so that's how you would check it in the command line. If I hadn't edited the, uh, the file, then it would show me a proper, um, yes, this was the correct signature. So that's how you would do it in command line. Now, another cool thing that you can do is you can encrypt messages or files. So for instance, let's take a look at this again. I'm gonna say, hey, this is super secret info. Okay, so I've got a, a plain text message here. I can select it all, right click and go to services. I can now encrypt the selection. Then it says, who's this intended for? Okay, who do you want to send this to? So I can choose a recipient. Maybe I want to send it to uh, this one here, btc sessions at gmail.com. I'm picking this one because we'll show how to decrypt it afterwards. If I picked one where I didn't have the key, so like Craig Raw or Spectre Signer, then we couldn't decrypt it because we don't have the private key or the secret key there, um, only they would be able to decrypt it. So this is just an example, but let's say we're sending it and we're sending it to this particular key, BTC sessions. Okay, um, then you choose my key. So we're gonna use the sessions test one. And it says, do you wanna sign it? Do you want to add recipients? Um, and do you wanna add an extra password? So we're just gonna sign it and we're not gonna encrypt it with an additional password right now. So we'll hit encrypt and you get this. So you do not see the original message here. You only see this mess of code. So you could post this literally anywhere and nobody would be able to decrypt and read the message other than the intended recipient, okay? The person with the keys that you had meant it for. So you can do that. Let's say I'm the recipient and I see this message and I know, hey, this is for me. I bet I could decrypt it. I select it all, right click, go to services and decrypt selection. There we go. Hey, this is super, super secret info. And it was from a trusted signature, sessions test, sessions at test.ca, that original one that I created it with. So I can hit okay. Now this doesn't just apply to plain text, it can apply to files as well. So I'm gonna close this um, and let's do, I'm actually gonna use a file that I've got here. 
So I just made a copy of that. So this is a this is a picture that I just put together for a workshop that I'm doing. So I can actually encrypt this file. So again, right click, uh, services, and I can encrypt the file. And who's this for? Who should be able to unlock it? I'm gonna leave it as BTC sessions, the one that we did before. All right, my key is sessions test. Um, I can add myself as a recipient so that I can then unlock it again afterwards. If I don't add myself as a recipient, then my key won't even unlock this file. All right. And then I can add an additional password if I want. I'm going to leave those blank. I'm going to hit encrypt. Encryption finished. All right. So this creates a file that looks like this. Oops. Of course. There we go. There's that file. ccbundle.jpg. Dot .gpg. So that means it's encrypted. What do I do? How do I open this? Well, I can either just double click it. By the way, we'll just pretend we don't have this. All right, so we have this file. This file was intended for the person holding this key. We have that key. Well, we can either double click or uh, we can right click and do services, but I'm just going to double click this one. Trusted signature from sessions test signed file ccbundle.jpg. So it created a new file that isn't encrypted, which is on my other desktop. I'll drag it over and there's that file. So we've now decrypted that file with our private key and it was sent specifically to us from somebody else. Now you can also decrypt a file using the command line and I'll show you how to do that here. Again, I'm on my desktop. So if you need to get there, a CC or a CD desktop, but we're currently in the desktop, which is where the file is located. So I'm going to type GPG dash dash decrypt. And then I'm going to start typing the name of the file and I'll hit tab. It'll fill it in for me. And then we need to do uh, the little greater than sign. And then we're going to type the name of the file that we'd like to name the decrypted one. So I'm just going to call this cc.jpg because it's a JPEG file. All right. We have to add the ending to it. Uh, otherwise, it won't know what kind of file it is. But nonetheless, we've got it all in. Enter. And this has now created a file. It's on my other desktop. So I'll drag it over. But there it is. There's that image decrypted from the encrypted file that we've received with the keys that were meant for us. So just some final thoughts here. If you're a Bitcoiner and you're, again, trying to live by the ethos of don't trust, verify, um, it's worth taking the time to learn how to do this. Um, if you're really diving down that self-verification rabbit hole of, you know, don't trust other people. I'm going to hold my own keys. I'm going to run my own node. Then while this can seem a little um, daunting at first, uh, learning how to put in some of these commands and um, dealing with something that's very foreign, the terminal, which is is very, very new to me in the past year or so as well. Um, don't worry too much. Again, the act of doing it is the learning tool itself. And uh, Google is your friend in terms of looking up things because a lot of it's a lot of copy and paste. Okay, and what, what is the command that I need? How do I navigate around this stuff? So hopefully this will give you at least a good start here. And if you're on a Mac, at least there's that nice GUI with the GPG key uh, keychain thing there. Um, but try some of the command line. I would encourage you give it a try, see, and just um, familiarize yourself with it because it's it's a good skill to have. It's a good skill to cultivate. And I'm still in the midst of learning it myself. So uh, hopefully this was helpful to you as well. Let me know. Um, how you fared in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton. It helps get this content in front of more eyeballs. If you would like to help the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors in the show notes. CoinKite, ShakePay, Leaden, BitRefill, Bill Foddle. They're all down here. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me off a Bitcoin tip at my strike page, strike.me slash BTC sessions. You get there. 
you can type in any amount you want, hit the tip button, you'll be greeted with a lightning invoice, or if you prefer, tap to the right, you'll see a regular Bitcoin QR code. With that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Hold the Bitcoin.